it really didn't take me um, a long time to to do the watch list tonight. You know, I looked at names that confirmed today, tomorrow, we're looking for continuation channels, right? Like Amazon confirmed today. Now for tomorrow, we're looking for either, if it opens lower, we're looking for a dip into the rising 60 minute support, red to green or a break above today's channels. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Uh, welcome to uh, Monday's edition of uh, the AccessAtrader.com um, wrap-up show. Everybody's doing well. So, you know, going back to last week, uh, big levels uh, obviously confirmed. Uh, we waited very, very long uh, for these levels to confirm uh, the 50 day moving average, 321, the 324 level. And that was kind of the go. You know, we talked about it uh, throughout the weekend on the video and, you know, came the weekend and I was like, listen, there's, there's really nothing to discuss here. We, we finally uh, reclaimed the, the 324, unless like, again, a meteor hit the earth or some crazy lunatic started, you know, just blowing up everything all over the place. We're going to rally. I mean, that, that, that's where we were set up for. Uh, the Qs were a go. A lot of technology names were a go. The Dow was very strong. And Good Friday came. We were all off. And news came out. Really good uh, jobs number came out. And that was basically the fuel to the fire that added to that 324 close on the Qs. And the market just absolutely exploded today. Uh, you had the Dow up about 400, you had the NASDAQ up about 200, really everything set to go. And again, today is one of those days when you're doing your chart work, it's kind of what I said last night, uh, we're actually on the, on the weekend update. There, there's certain times you just don't need to be creative. And these are the exact same words I used uh, for the weekend update show. You don't need to be creative. You don't need to go through uh, 900 different stocks. R remember the feel good stocks. Remember the names that everybody wants to own, the, the hedge fund managers, retail investors, hedge funds, index funds, mutual funds, right? It's technology. And they've been dead for such a long time. Uh, and they were actually going down for a very good amount of uh, end of February into March. We've been talking about the downside channels and the sell up bias for such a long period of time. And then we stopped because, again, the market did what it had to do to reclaim major, major levels. And I kept on reiterating the point for years now, right? It's not about being a bull. It's not about being a bear. It's about being an opportunist. It's not about being right. It's about taking the data that the market gives you on a closing basis, analyzing the chart, getting an opinion, and let that opinion play out organically, right? Don't chase the entries. Don't anticipate the moves. Let everything play out. And, you know, like, like I said on the weekend update, you don't need to uh, be creative, right? You didn't need to put a lot of thought uh, into today's session because, again, if you're like me and you trade technology, well, this is what the NASDAQ 100 is, right? You had eight times rejection off this 324, first close over 324, yada, yada, yada. Huge move today. You had a, almost a, nearly a six and a half point move today on the queues. And you can see where the next uh, measure potential is. You got roughly 33 and a half. And then you got roughly 336. So yes, of course I'm bullish. Of course, you know, going into tomorrow's session, of course I'm bullish. There's still a lot of names that even haven't confirmed macro yet. This is a, this is the most important part of, of what we're seeing here. The names that are confirming macro, like for example, Friday, right? We saw in the video, that was my top play on Friday. Confirmed macro. Look at this two-day run, right? Huge two-day run. Macro was at uh, 541. The stock is at 561. Uh, the names that we were concentrating on today, right? Remember uh, off the weekend video, the first one was Netflix that didn't confirm yet. But the second one was, right, the mother of all mothers. And this was definitely uh, my trade of the day. You had a lot of call buying coming in today uh, for the 3250s. Um, you know, this looks great, right? First close oversupply. If you've been watching this broadcast, this isn't the first time you saw this range or, or, or shocked that this range uh, got confirmed. This was supply right here. We talked about this 3182 level. This is supply. This morning, it went through supply like a knife through butter and literally closed uh, within a couple of points of the highs of the day. And if you believe in technical analysis, then look at which 
room we have to the next channel here. Uh, the next channel should be right above this. If they could confirm, I mean, confirm, if they could just start really confirming tomorrow's action, excuse me, tomorrow, today's action tomorrow, right? You have a gap all the way up to this 3340 level. And if it takes out 3340, you can see how much room you have left. And again, if you don't think Amazon can go back to back days of going up 60, 70, 100 points, you know, you've never traded Amazon. So really good bull market action today. We'll, we'll get to the pivots in a second. Some sin some really aggressive pivots, really, really aggressive pivots today. Uh, Facebook, um, you know, Facebook, um, Facebook, Apple. Uh, you had, uh, what was the other one? RBLX that was really good. You had NVIDIA. You had, you had so much stuff going on today. And that's exactly the byproduct of the reflection of the queues dragging everything up. And if even if you look at a stock like Apple today, and there was a really good pivot on Apple today, um, I personally thought it was going to stop in the 25s. Okay, closed. It went to 26. It's not even, if, if you look at Apple's chart, it hasn't even reclaimed the macro 50-day supply yet. So you just imagine how much potential these stocks have when they take out the 50-day. And all you need to do is just look at NVIDIA, right? Look at NVIDIA off the 50-day. Look at Amazon, right? Off the 50-day. So your job today, if you are, you know, if you take this business seriously and you go through the members of the NASDAQ 100, just, you know, just all you need to do is look at the stocks that are about to confirm the 50-day moving average. You know, use Amazon, use NVIDIA as your template, right? When you see a stock close at the 50-day moving average, all it needs to do the next day is to confirm and build above that level. And once that has it, your probability of sustaining a new leg, right, of starting a new leg up, is highly probable because that's exactly what stocks do when they confirm supply. So you had Really good uh, economic news coming from uh, Good Friday. You had a massive follow through, through today in the QQQs. And now you're looking for names that haven't had that big move yet going into tomorrow's channel. So, yeah, I mean, it really didn't take me um, a long time to, to do the watch list tonight. You know, I looked at names that confirmed today. Tomorrow, we're looking for continuation channels, right? Like Amazon confirmed today. Now for tomorrow, we're looking for either... If it opens lower, we're looking for a dip into the rising 60-minute support, red to green, or a break above today's channel. So, you know, you don't have to be too creative. So if you are looking at names for tomorrow, start looking at some semiconductors. Not every single semiconductor broke out. Like, look at Maxim, right? Look at Maxim. Maxim is ready to go, right? I haven't traded Maxim a lot in my life, but, but look at this channel here. You can see how pretty basic this channel is, and if the Qs have another strong day. Yeah, it's going to wake up. Look at a name that has nothing to do with beta, right? Excuse me, not Mara. Uh, what's the other one? Riot, right? Look at a chart like Riot. It has nothing to do with beta, but the point is, look how many times it stopped at the same channel. Th look, one, two, three times. If, if it finally confirms this channel, depending how strong Bitcoin is, because now it's, it's almost like a direct derivative of Bitcoin and see how uh, strong matter is, you know, if this thing wakes up, why can't it go to $68? A name like, for example, like RBLX that I traded today uh, off the Goldman Sachs upgrade, look how many times it's gotten rejected off the same area, once, twice, three times. If this thing finally confirms, why can't this thing go its all-time high? So we're set up to it today, guys. We're, we're really, really set up uh, for tomorrow. Yes, there are still a lot of names that are very lagging, like Square, you know, lag. But the point is, here's the 50-day moving average. So if it confirms tomorrow, the next day, the day after, at least you have another point of reference to trade off. I mean, look what, um, for example, look what uh, Google did today, right? Look what Google did. Just absolutely in went in nuts. There was a pivot we had off that 4647 level that the stock ran up 100 points. So the NASDAQ names are strong. The continued momentum is strong. Don't overthink. We've been saying this for a very, very long time. When technical levels confirm, they confirm for a macro reason. It's like the Barry Sanders effect. If any of you guys have watched uh, any of the PS60 workshops, there's something I call the Barry Sanders effect. It basically means a stock can go up one day, right? Hit one day, it hits supply, right? It's like Barry Sanders, one carry, three yards. Another carry, four yards, right? Another carry, three yards. And finally, Barry Sanders confirms supply, sees a hole, goes through it, and goes 80 yards for a touchdown. And that's what we're looking for. Not every single day 
are you going to get the Barry Sanders effect? But when, the, when it finally opens up and the moon and the stars and all technicals line up, you do have a really strong probability that stocks are going to wake up and they're going to wake up aggressively. All you need to do is prepare for it, trust technical analysis, and click the mouse. And that's, and that's the most important part uh, of this whole equation. Have the confidence to click the mouse with extreme prejudice and usually good things are going to happen. So let's talk about today's day. Again, everything, everything was beta, right? Everything was beta. This is what we talk about in the live webinar, understanding the difference between uh, trading a day that gives you a 2-7 offsuit versus a day that gives you, you know, jacks, queens, kings, or aces. And any day that you're seeing me constantly put Amazon, Netflix, Boeing, Google, Facebook, this is a premium day. Uh, not every single premium day gets confirmed. Today's session did, and, you, you know, really, really good days happen. So Amazon, I actually got long off the opening range high of uh, 3182s. The first candle was 20 points, right? If you screwed up Amazon this morning, your first candle was 20 points without, without, without a downtick. It was absolutely great. Uh, huge area, again, reclaimed the 50-day moving average. Here is Amazon, right? The reason why 3182, I went a little bit early. You can see here 3182 is the highest area into supply uh, on the March 23 highs. And when it confirmed, you know, stock win all the way uh, to 3236. Big, big move there on Amazon. Uh, Netflix, we're still waiting. Uh, Boeing, nice move. Not a huge, but nice move on Boeing. Uh, rejected twice. Uh, 258 needs to build. Here was Boeing, right? Here was the 258 on Boeing. Took out this 258 and went to uh, 260 and a half. Not a huge move, but again, still looks higher if it confirms uh, today's channel tomorrow. Uh, Google went nuts. Absolutely nuts. Congratulations for all you guys uh, who caught Google. Uh, 2146 needs to build. Here was Google. Right here was Google. Look where Google opened up today. Right, Google opened up today at 2147. It's not like Google gapped up 30 points or what. Google gapped up, uh, went, opened up at 47, traded to 45. Right, 2145. And as soon as it took out that 2147, the stock went literally it went up 100 points. Just an absolute sick move on uh, Google. Facebook went bananas. Uh, 30250. 303 needs to build. You kind of get the you kind of get the the point. Beta just went nuts, right? So here was the 30250, 303, and it went to almost 311. Monster buyers for uh, the 310 and the 320 weeklies uh, for Facebook. Uh, Microsoft lost its mind. 343 needs to build. Here was Microsoft, and you know just the huge moves, right? Here's the 343 confirmed, and then it confirmed the 52 week high at 46, and went all the way up. Uh, to 250. That was big as well. Uh, Tesla never got to uh, the 714 area. I still like Tesla, right? Um, deliveries came in pretty good. Wedbush gave it a thousand dollar price target. It didn't quite get to that 714 level, but I think that's a big number. and It's a number we have to really kind of respect going forward. Um, so we'll definitely keep an eye on that. Uh, Apple 124 rejected twice on daily. And I said, keep this in mind. This is still the fact. It's still underneath daily supply. So just use it for cash flow. But here is the, the point of reference that, again, this is what we talk about sneaky pivots, right? Here's the 124 and a quarter. Here's 124.18. And it got through this level here, 24 and a quarter, went right to supply zone here uh, at the 126 level. For, for Apple to break out, quote unquote, the Barry Sanders effects, it needs to reclaim this like 28 level on, on the 50 day moving average. So the point is, it's not there yet, but you could still find channels that are very aggressive that are going to complement. Uh, the action uh, in the queue. So a $2 move on Apple. RBLX, I caught this thing opening range high. I caught it for like a dollar and change. It traded as high as the 7280. This 73 area is still, <clears throat> excuse me, really, really big there. So take on the way up, right? Take on the way up. Nice spike. Oh, yeah. Oh, hell yes. Of course. You get a $20 uh, candle in, in Amazon. You know, you're going to give it a hell yes as well. Uh, big move there on, on Facebook. Uh, huge spike. Their monster move on Google. So the Fang and Friends, uh, they were going absolutely nuts. You can see all of them literally one by one. Uh, Tesla had a sneaky pivot, only ran up like a dollar and change before they sold it off. But I still like it. I still like Tesla uh, for this week here. Uh, yeah, Amazon, right? 31, 85, 38 needs to build. 
uh, traded up to 32, uh, 36. Again, I still, you know, at you know, 3250 is the next stop, and then it goes into the 3300s. Uh, Netflix still valid, blah 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 blah. So yeah, so pretty cool day, uh, pretty good good day. You know, we prepared for it, we waited for it, we were patient on both sides of the market, and you know, once in a while, the good guys uh, do have a pretty good day. So that's it, guys. So you know, pretty basic stuff. Uh, again, I'm definitely bullish for tomorrow. Make sure the stocks that you're trading for tomorrow are either confirming supply or above it that are confirming the previous day's channel. The last thing you want to do is buy something underneath supply with absolutely no room. Usually though, what's going to happen is you're going to buy it. It's going to take an opening range highs. You're not going to know there's supply there. It's going to get rejected and the stock's going to go right on the day. So be very, very careful of what you're trading and make sure it's, it's about to confirm some sort of supply zone. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless. And I'll see you everybody tomorrow.